So what we're going to be looking at are some different formulas in the electricity unit that you need to know how to use. We've already dealt with one and here's the one that we've covered in class already. And this is Ohm's law and how to calculate resistance. And if you remember when we looked at this formula, we labeled just like I've got here on the board already, what each letter represented and the units that that letter is measured in. And so R represents resistance of a circuit and that resistance is measured in units of ohms denoted by this Greek letter symbol uh, omega. V stands for voltage measured in volts and I stands for current measured in amps. These two formulas over here are new formulas. This formula calculates energy using power and time and this formula calculates power using current and voltage. And again you can see the, the letters here denoted by what the units are that each one of those things are measured in. So the two new ones that you need to be aware of is energy is denoted by an E measured in joules denoted by a J. And P is measured, uh, it represents power measured in watts which is denoted by the letter W and T is time measured in seconds. The special thing about this formula you need to be careful of is that time always needs to be unit in units of seconds. So if you have a problem that says that the circuit ran for two minutes, you have to convert those two minutes into seconds and then plug that number of seconds into the formula. So for that question, particularly if it said two minutes, you wouldn't stick two into the formula, you would stick 120 seconds into the formula to get the right answer. If you don't do that, you won't get the right answer. Um, and so energy, if we had something that was uh, referring to the energy that a particular substance is using, then if it was 100 joules, that's how I would write that out. Okay. Remember that for this one over here, when we talked about resistance, if we had a, a circuit that had three ohms of resistance, we didn't say 3R, right? We said that the resistance was equal to three ohms. And so that's how we write that out and, and just sort of a quick review on, on, that, on that concept that we've already covered in class. This last formula down here in the bottom is a formula that calculates efficiency. Now efficiency makes use of this term energy right here, which is measured in joules, and you can see that we can calculate energy by using this formula. But for uh, any appliance that's plugged into the wall, that appliance or any sub anything that's plugged into the wall that's going to draw energy out of an electrical circuit is going to take that energy and put it into itself. But an appliance that draws a certain amount of energy into it isn't always going to, and hardly ever actually, converts all of that energy into useful energy. Because machines have moving parts and there's things that rub, lots of times we have energy that's lost due to friction. And how much we can reduce the amount of friction uh, in a, a particular device is going to increase the efficiency that that device moves at. So if you think of, for example, a, a, a rusty chain on a bicycle. If you have a, a chain that's got so much rust on it that you can't even turn the pedals, then that bike's going to be zero efficient, zero uh, percent efficient. You stick in a whole bunch of joules of energy, but because that, that energy isn't enough to turn the pedals, then that bike is 0% efficient. It doesn't turn any of the energy that's going into it into useful energy, which is moving you on the bike. Uh, conversely, if you have a bike that's got a really well-oiled chain and it moves really easily, you can stick a lot of energy into that bike and that bike will convert that energy into a lot of useful energy that will move you from point A to point B. And so this is why riding a bike with a rusty chain is a lot harder work for you than it is riding a bike with a really nice, a nicely oiled chain. And so uh, efficiency is calculated by the energy out divided by the energy in in a particular system. So if I have again, for example, a bike and uh, I put certain amount of energy in, or sorry, certain amount of energy in, if I could use all of that energy to be useful, then my efficiency obviously would be, let's say 100 joules divided by 100 joules, which would give me 100%. Um, but if I'm only able to convert 50 joules of that 100 joules into useful energy, then I would only be 50% efficient for that machine. Now, because we're talking about the electricity unit, these devices are typically gonna be devices that are plugged into an electrical circuit that's drawing energy and power from 
from that circuit. And so when we're calculating efficiency for electrical devices, we're talking about how much electrical energy is going into the device versus how much energy of that was used to actually perform the task. Like let's say a dryer pulls this much energy out of the wall, but only uses this much energy to dry the clothes. So how efficient is the dryer? And so we'll look at some practice problems in the next clip to kind of give you a sense of how to do these problems and use these formulas. And so we'll be right back. Back again with uh, our examples to illustrate the formulas that you need to be able to use uh, and be able to uh, complete your assignment. So here's a, a, just a quick little generic practice problem where it says an electrical device requires 50 watts of power okay, and runs for 30 seconds. And so when this device runs for this period of time, it's going to draw a certain amount of electrical energy out of the outlet. And this problem wants you to calculate that. How much energy does it take in? And so what you see here on the board is what you would need to write down to show your work. Okay? Anything less than this would be considered incomplete. And the reason why is because uh, this is a great way to help keep things organized and to make sure that your work is legible, but also to make sure that you're plugging things in correctly and that myself and Mr. Wolf know that you know what you're doing rather than just writing out what the answer is. Okay, so uh, what I want you to do is I want you to list out first the information that you have in the question over here on the side. What does E equal, what does P equal, and what does T equal? And for this question, E is what we're calculating. It says how much energy. So this is E is equal to, I don't know, a question mark. Okay, P is equal to 50 watts. That's right here in the problem. And time is equal to 30 seconds. And so then I write out the formula that I need to use for this question. And so what I would normally do is I would go to my formula sheet. I would look at, okay, here are the problems or here are the formulas that I need to be able to choose from. Given the information that I'm given here in the question, what formula would I choose? And obviously I would choose the formula that has the parameters that I'm given in the question. And so energy is equal to power times time. I would need to use this formula obviously to calculate energy. So then after I write out this formula, I would plug in the numbers. P goes in for P, so 50 watts. T goes in for T, so 30 seconds. And then I would just plug this into my calculator and I would get an answer of 1500 joules. And that would be where I would stop and that would be my answer. You can round your answers to the nearest whole number or if it's like zero decimal something something then you can write it to two decimal places and that's as far as you need to go. Uh, kind of continuing on, if we kind of look at part two of this problem, if we've got the same device that uses of the 1500 joules that it took into it, it used a thousand of those joules to actually perform the task that it was designed to do. If that's dry clothes or if that's dry hair or if that's to curl hair or whatever that is. Uh, how, much, how efficient is this device? And so again, set it up where you're choosing the formula that you're going to be using. Obviously I'm calculating efficiency here. So efficiency is, I don't know, question mark. And the energy out is how much energy was used to actually perform the useful task. Energy in was how much it was, how much it was, uh, how much it took in from the, the electrical circuit. So this number was actually calculated by using this formula in the previous part of this question. And so then I plug that into here, 1500, and then I've got my formula here, energy out is 1000 joules, energy in 1500 joules. I multiply that by 100 to get my uh, percentage, and my percentage punches out as 67%. And so there's my answer. And again, for full marks, you would need to make sure that you're showing all of that work. It seems a little over the top, but because we're just starting out with this and really starting to learn how to, to do math properly and making sure that we're keeping track of units, this is a skill that is gonna carry forward for you guys into grade 10, grade 11, and grade 12. Uh, and so we feel like it's really important that you write it out this way to develop these skills now So it's not something that you have to uh, Worry about having on your plate later. So hopefully these example examples were helpful uh, Good luck on the assignment and we'll see you guys in the next video